wanted to show a little bit of Karma, which is a testing, it's a test runner that we can integrate into our JavaScript applications. So just a quick demonstration, we'll install it. So we'll install the Karma command line interface globally. This will make it available in all of our projects. Um, when we actually install Karma, we're going to only make it available in the current project rather than make it global. It used to have to be global. It's not anymore. Um, that way you can have different setups per project if you need different versions and whatnot. So we're going to install Karma. It's the main package that actually handles the test running. Um, I'm also going to install PhantomJS so that we can have a headless browser run tests. I already have Chrome installed, um, which actually gave me some grief at first because I had multiple versions of Chrome. And so the app name was incorrect in the applications folder on my Mac. If you want to make sure that it runs smoothly, then it has to be in the, the default install, which is the case for most people. Most people don't have the weird case that I had. Um, you have to install the different um, Karma plugins, and there's around 100 of them. But the ones that we're going to be interested in are Jasmine. So we'll use Jasmine for testing. It's really similar to RSpec, so it should look familiar. Uh, we'll install the Karma Phantom JS launcher here. And then we'll install the Chrome launcher so we can run it both in a browser and headless. And then we'll install Karma coverage so that we can determine um, our test coverage. Okay. So now that all that stuff is installed, we can go and create a test folder. Create a folder called test. So this is where all of our tests are gonna live um, once we get everything all set up and running. So now I just have to do a karma init. And this is gonna set up a configuration file that tells karma how to run these tests. So it's going to ask me a bunch of questions, one of which is, which testing framework do you want to use? We're using Jasmine, so I can just hit enter. Um, do we want to use require.js? No, we don't, because um, we don't need it in this project. Uh, we want to capture Chrome, and if I hit the tab key, it'll actually go through the different browsers. Uh, the other one I'm going to add is phantom.js, since we added the loader for that one. So now we have phantom. Uh, now we can continue on. All right, we want to find everything in the test folder, so it's going to look like this. Um, we'll pick up all the subdirectories, and anything that has a JS extension is going to be a test that we will run. All right, so it just tells me, it gives me this warning that says there's no files there because we haven't created any test files yet, um, and that's okay. This asks for any exclude files, so if I put files in my test directory that I don't want uh, Karma to run, I can put them here. We don't have any of those, so we're just going to move on. Um, and we do want Karma to watch all the files and run the tests when the test and the code changes. So we're going to go with yes. All right, so this has generated this karma.conf.js for us. So if I go out here and look, um, all of those questions basically just set up this file for me. So under frameworks, we have Jasmine, just like we specified. Uh, we told it to look for these files. Here's what we need to exclude. Basically, if there's any of the questions that you didn't know the answer to or that you have to change your mind later on, you can come in and just edit this file. So this is where everything lives. Uh, it's relatively simple, um, easy to set up. Uh, it's worth noting that the web server port is 9876. Uh, when we run the test, you'll be able to actually hit the test, the browser and hit that test port and see the results. Okay, so now if I come out here, I can run karma start, and I'm going to give it the name of the configuration file. So this actually fires up a Chrome window, and you can see here's my window over here. And this has all the tests run. Try to, try to move it without zoom messing that up. Uh, but you'll also notice down here that executed zero of zero. So we don't have any tests for it to run yet. That's okay. We're going to go make one. So if I go into the test folder, we're just going to make one. And for now, I'm just going to call it test.js. And 
This will look familiar to everyone who's done RSpec. You start out with the describe, but this is JavaScript, so we don't have blocks like we do in Ruby. Instead, we'll give it a function. So I'm just going to call this a test, for lack of anything better. And here's this function that's going to be executed. Um, it is true. Also give that a function. And we're just going to say our test equals true. And then I can say expect, oops. Ah, there we go. Okay. Expect test to be true. And now if I go back out to my command line, you can see that it auto ran that test. It says executed one of one and it's, it was a success. And you can see that there was a total of two and that's because we're running it in two different browsers essentially at the same time. One we're running it in Phantom, the other we're running it in Chrome. So now I can come out here and here it is running in Chrome. Um, if I want to debug, let me hit this debug, hit inspect element, I should be able to come out here and see the results. So I can see success, a test is true, skip zero tests. Um, and here's test.js. So if I want to, I can put uh, breakpoints in here so that I can examine my tests using a debugger. So if something's going wrong, this gives me the opportunity to use the tools that I'm familiar with to come in and debug and figure out exactly what's, what's going on. Okay.